This is the Sri Ramana Maharshi Satsang, a time to listen, reflect, and deeply meditate. Know yourself and be always free and at peace. Welcome. I'm Richard Clark. I'm not a teacher or a guru. I just love this teaching, so I want to share it. I'm reading and commenting on the book Day by Day with Bhagavan. This week is from March 19th, 1945. A visitor from Sindh, very probably Kundanal, a Mahatma of Hyderabad, Sindh, now Pakistan, asks, it is said that the world and the objects that we see are all unreal, like the snake and the rope. It is also stated in other places that the seer and the seen are the same. If the seer and seen are the same, then how can we say that the seen is unreal? Bhagavan all that is meant is that the scene regarded as an independent entity independent of the self is unreal the scene is not different from the seer what exists is the one self not a seer in a scene the scene regarded as the self is real. The visitor asks, it is said that the world is like a dream, but there is this difference between dream and the waking state. In dream, I see my friends or relations and go through some experiences with them. When I wake up and ask those friends or relations whom I met in the dream about the dream, they know nothing about it. But in the waking state, what I see and hear is corroborated by so many others. Bhagavan, you should not mix up the dream and the waking states. Just as you seek corroboration about the waking state experiences from those you see in the waking state, you must ask for cooperation about the dream experiences from those whom you saw in the dream state, that is, when you were in the dream. Then, in the dream, those friends or relations whom you saw in the dream would cooperate you. The main point is, are you prepared when awake to affirm the reality of any of your dream experiences. Similarly, one who is awakened into jhana cannot affirm the reality of the waking experience. From his viewpoint, the waking state is a dream. Now in this dialogue, Ramana Maharshi is asked about the nature of reality and the difference between the dream and waking states. The visitor starts by expressing a common confusion about the nature of reality using the analogy of the snake and the rope. He questions how the scene can be unreal if the seer and the scene are ultimately the same. The seer is real. Doesn't that mean the scene is too? Bhagavan begins by clarifying that when it is said that the scene is unreal, it means unreal when the scene is considered independently of the self. In the ultimate reality, there's no distinction 
between the seer and the seen. There is only the one self. No difference. The unreality lies in perceiving the seen as an independent entity separate from the self. The visitor then asks about the concept of the world being like a dream and raises questions about the difference between dream and waking states. In dreams, personal experiences are not cooperated by others on waking, while waking experiences are shared and validated by many. Ramana addresses this by saying not to mix up the dream and waking states. He suggests seeking cooperation for dream experiences from those seen in the dream itself, just as you seek validation for waking experiences from those you see in the waking state. So ask another dream character if the dream is real. The crucial point is that for the self-realize, the waking state is akin to a dream. In this state of true knowledge, the distinctions between dream and waking blur, and the waking state is perceived as illusory. For both states, the content is known. Who is the knower? Is this knower a character in either the waking state or in the dream? Bhagavan stresses the fundamental oneness of the seer and the seen, saying that what exists is the one self only. Any perception of separateness is considered unreal. The seen, when recognized as the self, is real. This challenges the conventional understanding of reality based on independent external entities. Ramana draws a parallel between dream and waking state, saying that the self-realize regard the waking state as dreamlike. Why is waking like a dream? For both, the content is entirely in the mind, and we are the unchanging consciousness existence that knows the mind. This challenges the usual understanding of the solidity and reality of waking state experiences. These teachings encourage us to question our perception, to reflect on and contemplate the nature of reality and deepen our understanding of the interconnectedness of the seer and the seen. The emphasis is on the unity of the self. This serves as a foundation for exploring the teachings of Ramana Maharshi in a practical and experiential manner. So inquire know yourself and be always free and at peace. And now a talk from Nomi, Reality of the Self. Ineloquent teachings of the most sublime nature. Sri Bhagavan has revealed 
the reality of the self. To adhere to those teachings, to follow them, to put them into practice, is actually to become them. For the instructions, when properly comprehended, all revolve around this solitary existence of the nature of being, consciousness, bliss. What are you to do? Know the nature of you. That which is to be revealed is really never hidden. For existence cannot be hidden from itself. And there is not another from which it can be hidden. You exist. You are. Realize that you. Know that you are. Know that the nature of that being. That being is not a thing not embodied, not conceivable, free from individuality. If this quintessential knowledge is realized, then you know what is to be known. Then you've experienced what needs to be experienced or may be said to have realized what needs to be realized. Then all the temples are your home, and your temple is everywhere. Then all the holy events celebrate you. And every moment is sacred. then all the mortis bear your own face. Yet you remain formless. All the prayers are answered. All the meditations have reached their peak. And the perfect fullness, which is your own nature, shines always. All right, now let's take a few minutes and inquire ourselves. Notice that you exist, and you know that you exist. And now inquire, investigate within yourself. What is the distinction between the seen and the seer?
How do I define reality? How do I know what is real? Do I seek external validation for my experiences or reality? Naomi says reality is non-objective. What does that mean to you?
Have I experienced moments where a waking life felt like a dream? Have I experienced moments where a dream felt like waking life? Who am I? What is the nature of my existence? Am I a body, a mind, a thinker? Am I just consciousness in existence? 
what exists. What is always All right. And let's close with a chant. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om. Peace, peace, peace. All right. So what's real anyway? <laughs> that formless, indescribable, that which we are. That mm -hmm. changeless, no beginning, no end. Mm -hmm. How how to even use a word to describe it impossible uh-huh uh, that's why i like nomi's description of non-objective yeah because yeah, whatever it is uh you can't grapple it with the mind the mind is based on recognizing and manipulating objects yeah Ramakrishna but, say the mind is like one gallon of water trying to understand the ocean. Okay. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. But still, as I have uh, meditated and reflected on the non-objective viewpoint, one of the problems with the non-objective viewpoint is that you can't see it anywhere. <laughs> you know it's like trying to find consciousness consciousness is everything but when i look amongst the everything it's hard to see it anywhere that's like your eyes can see but they don't see themselves right mm -hmm. and like the sun doesn't shine on itself mm -hmm. right right yeah Anyway, good to be with you. Good to uh, join together, shining a little light on Ramana's words. And very delicious. And, namaste. And enjoying Nomi's words. Yes, yeah. Namaste. Thank you. These videos help bring Ramana Maharshi's teachings into your direct experience. Subscribe now 